This is the Tech Support Guy Show, episode 37, for Sunday, September 19th, 2010. Mixed reality and new iPods. Welcome to the Tech Support Guy Show. I'm Mike Cermak, known on the site as Tech Guy. Tech Support Guy is the site you go to for your technical problems, techguy.org. With me today is Dan McCarthy. Good afternoon. And also my brother, Glenn Cermak. Hey, hey. And I really appreciate you guys being here today. And we're going to talk some tech news. And not a whole lot of tech news going on right now. Uh, the biggest story, I guess, is the uh, Apple iPods. And uh, Apple's come up with a couple of new products. And I know, Glenn, you're a Apple fanboy, so uh, I'm, I'm sure you have nothing but wonderful things to say about it. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> I've heard some controversy on it. I mean, there's some nice things. So the new iPod Touch, for one thing, has the video conferencing like the new iPhone yes. does. Yes. So you've got to enjoy that, right? Uh, I think uh, it's at least a good addition. I mean, I don't know how much I would use something like that, but, I mean, it's it's nice to have. Well, and the thing about the um, iPod Touch... And you'll be able to call the... Like, you'll be able to use FaceTime on the Touch to call people that have the iPhone. Mm -hmm. As long as they so, have Wi-Fi. The limitation a lot of people don't realize right. with the uh, video conferencing, uh, even on the iPhone, is that it has to be connected to Wi-Fi. It won't do that over the cellular network, at least not yet. I don't. I haven't heard plans of changing that, but they've got to change that, I think. I'm sure the um, cellular providers would love to have all that extra data. Yeah, right. Well, th that's exactly what we've talked about in the past is that, is that the bandwidth restrictions or bandwidth requirements for doing video conferencing on the uh, iPhone, just, it would kill it. And then yeah, you and have supposedly the... Supposedly the, uh, the iPad is going to be getting that as well with its next release. I was kind of surprised it didn't have it to begin with, to be honest with you. And now that they don't have... Unlimited data packages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's no coincidence. <laughs> I mean, they suddenly that, got rid of those. Gonna, <laughs> that's going to be quite an expensive feature having FaceTime. Yep, you're right. I, I, I mean, it's a neat thing. Everyone is expecting that to happen. Everyone's been waiting for video conferencing phones that are really simple to use and are everywhere. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of FaceTime. I'd rather have it in Skype, but it's it seems mm -hmm. to work pretty well. The only problem is that it's only on, you know, only on Wi-Fi right now. I really yeah, think they need to do a commercial the with the Jetsons. <laughs> I really do, because I, I, I feel good. like we're we're getting there. You know, meet George Jetson. <laughs> we got the video conferencing going on. Yeah, yeah that would be perfect. Uh, I, a teacher down the hall from me has an iPhone four, and her brother, who lives in Philadelphia, has an iPhone four. And she was just telling me on Friday night that. She went home and took a nap, and uh, her phone was ringing, and he was calling in FaceTime, and uh, she had to keep declining it because she didn't <laughs> didn't want to be seen. Want a video <laughs> phone call, you know, while she's laying on the couch. Uh, now, I haven't played with the iPhone four much, but with FaceTime, are you able to record your conversations? And the video? I don't believe so. I, I, I know you can't on the mobile devices. I'm not sure about on Apple, I mean, on a Mac. You probably could one way or another. Even if it's not built into the Mac directly, there's probably some screen capture software that could record it. I would think so. Yeah. Well, we've talked about, uh, this, I, I think we talked about this on one of our, our previous podcasts, but there are uh, adult entertainment uh, people getting into using FaceTime as an add-on service. Really? I hadn't heard that. Where you can, yeah, they're they're using FaceTime so that, that you can basically one-on-one -on -one with your star of choice. <laughs> so to speak. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Right. So is that where the uh, recording question came from? No, that, that was, <laughs> I mean, no, 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 you know, I was... <laughs> I was reading uh, reading the news, and I was seeing a lot of uh, articles on texting and how texting is being used for incrimination uh, in in various cases. You know, there's a teacher in Georgia who is being um, sentenced to a year and a half for lewd co lewd texts that were sent to the, the students, and uh, you know, texting for crime tips and things like that, and how how technology is being used in that manner, and I, and I can see the exact same thing happening. There was another teacher in in Pennsylvania 
who had discovered um, compromising photos of a student on a phone after she had confiscated the phone from the student. And yep, uh, right by me, actually. And, and I'm seeing things like that happening. Gives you, you can a, record that kind of stuff. A whole new meaning to the the sexting thing that they're having problems with. Just sending digital yeah. photographs by uh, phone. You know, mm -hmm. teenagers and and even underage kids yeah. doing that now with video conference. But the argument can be made they've had webcams for years. I mean, this sure. is just adding an extra outlet sure. to it. It's not like it's you know a brand new technology. And I don't think that's a reason enough not to use it. So, well, so that's cool that uh, I was mentioning before the show that is now allowing cell phones to be used between classes one of the big concerns is what kids are going to do you know if they're they're allowed to carry their cell phone obviously they can use it between classes and what happens when they take it into the locker room right i should have i should have mentioned first of all glenn in case you don't know is a uh, teacher up in uh, harrisburg pennsylvania he's a, a history teacher and also a techno uh, technology coordinator up there for his school district so uh, we are going to talk some uh, some classroom tech as well but um, but yeah, I can see that as consideration. So a lot of schools, uh, and we'll jump back to Apple here in a minute, but a lot of schools have just outright banned uh, cell phone use in the school by the students. A lot of times the students aren't allowed to have them with them, or as I understand it, sometimes they can have them but have to leave them in the locker or have to leave them turned off or whatever so they can have them going right. to and from school. But you can't have them in, you know, can't have them on during the school day. So there's a school or a couple of schools that are changing their mind on that? Uh, a district right by me, uh, Cumberland Valley School District, at the high school only, uh, they are now allowing students to carry their cell phones, and they're allowed to text, they're allowed to call, basically whatever they want to do, uh, between classes and at lunch. Hmm. Well, that seems pretty reasonable to me. I mean, between classes is just, they're going to be talking to their friends anyway. Who cares if they're using a device at lunch? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That seems pretty reasonable. And with the, with the uh, other handheld devices that they're going to have available to them, their uh, their iPods, their iPads, they can communicate. If they can connect to the school's Wi-Fi network, <laughs> they can communicate with each other anyway. And they can do the same thing well, that we were if talking the about school, in the restrooms with first those of, devices. <laughs> right. First of all, I don't know of any schools that have open Wi-Fi. I'm sure that there are some. I said that. I, I take that back. I'm sure yeah, there are some. There are. Uh, our, our district got rid of Wi-Fi. I mean, when I started in my building... Everything was Wi-Fi. The computers connected wirelessly to the district network. The desktops, everything was wireless. And then when we uh, renovated, we did everything wired. Hmm. There's, there's no wireless anywhere in our building. Most school districts having an open Wi-Fi for student use. You know, it's yeah. one thing if it's a you know password protected thing for mm -hmm. teacher use, but anyhow. So I don't know. So I don't see that as a big deal. So I guess there's still some controversy. People but, don't uh, want I mean, them using the. Uh, using the uh, uh, cell phones even between classes or at lunch? Yeah. I, I think the concern is what they're going to use it for other than communicating. Such and, as? Well, like, if you're allowed to be carrying your cell phone now, you're obviously going to be taking it into the locker room. Oh, I see. That's what you're the, getting the to. The whole bullying situation, you know, like taking pictures of people changing, whatever. And then there's even the concern of, if you're carrying your cell phone with you, you go to gym, you put your lock, your phone in your locker when you go out to gym. I mean, even when we were in school, kids would take things out of gym lockers. So what is, what do people... And now you're going to have, you know, two $300 cell phones sitting in a gym locker while somebody's playing basketball. Well, I'd, I'd say the solution to that is to get a lock on your gym locker. But um, don't take your phone in. Well, what do you do anyway? I mean, obviously, most kids are taking their phone for use to and from school, mm -hmm. I guess they're using their regular locker, not their gym locker is what you're saying. Right. And and most schools don't have, or at least most schools that I know of, um, don't have locks on their gym lockers because they don't have enough lockers for every student in the locker room. Hmm. Like, that, that brings school, up a, we, a hygienic have... question. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that brings up a, what kind of question? Hygiene, is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but like my That's my school, disgusting. we have almost eight hundred students, but we don't have four hundred lockers in the girls' locker room and four hundred lockers in the sure, boys' sure. locker room. If I remember, and I'm old, so I might not remember, but if I remember, we had you know a specific locker assigned to you during your gym class, and you would just bring a padlock with you and lock it while it, you're out at gym, 
And then when you come back, you take your stuff out and take your lock with you. And then right. the, you know, the next guy uses it, which doesn't answer the hygiene problem for Dan, but, uh, <laughs> but I mean, it does answer the security problem. I mean, even if it is only sure. your locker for that gym period, you can still lock it. Yeah. Unless the school doesn't allow you to for some reason, but that seems silly. Anyhow, so I don't know. That, that doesn't seem like a big and, deal. And then the, the, the other concerns are, you know, kids are going to, it's going to increase tardies to class because kids will be finishing up their text message since they can't take, they can't have their phone out in the classroom. They'll be finishing up their phone call, whatever it is. Or I if, think teachers are confused if it, they don't it, think that that's already happening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's I'm, I'm, I, I agree, seriously. but I, I, I do think that this will increase that problem. Because if you can't have your phone out, most secondary schools now, teachers have to be in the hallway between classes. Just... For Every privilege given can be I, taken I, away. So specific students can have their privileges revoked if they're not sure. abiding by the rules. So at first, I think it'll be you, you'll you'll see a lot of people doing just what you said. Well, but and after the thing that, about it is, I hate these things where they don't allow something because it causes a completely unrelated problem. I mean, so <laughs> if the kids are tardy for whatever reason, then they're tardy and they have to follow. You know, they follow the yep. consequences of being tardy. I don't care if it's because Agreed. of that. You know, it's like, you know, no, we can't have, you know, soda machines in the in the you know building because then the kids will be tardy. It's like, well, no, maybe you shouldn't have soda machines for other reasons, but that's a stupid reason not to allow it. I mean, it's just not related directly to it. I think they're just, they're stretching there. You know, if tardiness is a problem for whatever reason, then they have to address the tardiness, but I don't think that allowing the device is related right. to that. Now, I will give you the locker room stuff. I could see that as a problem, and I don't know exactly what the solution would be there. Well, if kids are taking in their I, their iPods right now, I mean, that's it's it's something that's What's stopping probably them from already happening. Now? See, and, yeah. and most, and, and until this district changed their policy, you couldn't have an iPod with you either. My district, you can't have an iPod with you. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're now allowing more things that can take pictures. I mean, yeah, the, a kid could have taken an iPod Touch in there and taken a picture anyway. Mm -hmm. but, sure. Or a camera, for that matter. But now it's right. actually Well, and now I remember... You can carry it. I, and, I remember even when we were in school, Glenn, there was camera day, and there were specific yeah. regulations in place or some kind of rules in place for camera day on you know, gym classes. And I don't remember exactly what they did about it because I wasn't cool enough to actually bring a camera to school. But I remember the, the, there was a specific paragraph on the handout about it, about Jim. So, I mean, it's the kind of thing that certainly has had to be addressed in the past. It's just that cameras are now in every freaking device, so. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's interesting. I don't know. I, I'm in favor of the kids having the devices. I'm, I'm generally, as you are, Glenn, especially, and you're a teacher, in favor of using the, the technology rather than trying to ban it. But uh, they certainly do have some things they have to address. I mean, I, I hear their concerns, but me personally, I think they should be allowed. I think, I mean, there are so many pluses to it. Now teachers can, like the rule says that they can't have them out in class unless directed by a teacher to take them out. So a teacher can use these cell phones in class now if they want to because the students will have them. Mm -hmm. And for what? if nothing else, it's going to teach them proper etiquette. Well, yeah. that's true. There is a time and place that you can use. Well, your phone. and really, what's and when you're sitting in a meeting, when you're sitting in class, whatever it is, isn't an appropriate time. Oh, not when you're in a meeting. <laughs> yeah, when you're in a meeting. <laughs> um, but you know, what's the difference? To your point, there, I think. Yeah, you know, what's the difference between making the rule saying that you can't have the um, you can't have the device with you? It has to be in your locker, or it has to be in your pocket. I mean, what's the it's not accessible in your locker. It is accessible in your pocket. Right, but if they that. if they access it, then they have to you know suffer the consequences. Sure. You know, I mean, it's just I don't know. I don't. That seems. I, don't. I, I think one of the concerns I'm with that is lenient. just the 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 amount of effort, the amount of time, and the amount of manpower that it will take to address it if there are. 50 kids doing it in one day as opposed to two. Well, it depends on how bad you make the consequences, I think. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Then you only have to do it a couple of times, and you won't have to do 
<laughs> and I think that may be the answer. I mean, rules are rules. I, I think that right. you need to make the rules. There are reasons and- that to have a cell phone at school. I mean, especially for children who, who participate in a lot of extracurricular activities and they have to coordinate transportation between parents. Of, yeah. I mean, if you're in a large family, you've got five kids and they're all participating in various extracurricular activities, coordinating that is a, is a feat. Sure. Absolutely. But the argument could be made that in between, uh, you know, school hours, the phone ought to be in the locker room. I mean, not in the locker room, in the locker <laughs> and uh, shouldn't be with the kid. Sure. Uh, I, I, supp- I can I see, see reasons sides. for it. Yeah. I can yeah. see both yeah. sides of it. I'm glad I don't have to make the decision. <laughs> I won't They're have apparently to make doing it as a trial thing. run this year to see how it goes. And I'll be interested to see how it goes. So I guess they don't have to worry about it with the new iPod Nanos, though. Do the new Nanos have uh, cameras in them anymore? They do not. That's kind so of an interesting the, change. I, uh, only the fifth generation had cameras, and now with the sixth generation, they got rid of cameras. What, what is with that? They can't decide what they're doing? And I remember when the fourth generation came out, uh, Steve said, oh, no, they would never put cameras in the Nanos. That doesn't make any sense. And then the fifth generation right. came out, and it did have it. I guess Steve was right, right after all, and now they pulled him. Or what they're going to do now? Well, that they... It's just it's just like with the third generation. They had the short little fat ones mm-hmm. that were supposed to be you know the new thing, and then the next time they went right back to the the old body. These ones are totally different. I mean, there's no camera. You can't play video on them. That's my biggest problem, problem with them. What is with that? I I love my iPod Nano. You have a freaking touchscreen on it, but you can't it's play a, a video. That is strange, isn't it? It's an upsell. Is that what buy something else? Well, it, so it that is. she'll get they, the they iPod want, they touch. They want to get everybody buying the touch. Or you want to buy something else? If you want my theory on it, I would bet that it's so that you buy the next generation one. They come up with this hot new mini thing with the touch screen. Everyone's going to buy it, and then come you know maybe not Christmas time, but you know in a you know, not far in the future they're going to come up with the next generation, which will be the exact same thing, the same form factor, the same you know touch screen, <laughs> but it'll do video, and it'll probably have a camera on that. it. Oh yes, you won't do that. You mark my words. You you mark this video clip, and we're gonna go back. I'm gonna play it again. I, I, I think I think I'm well, gonna go back to the old body. I think we lost Glenn, kind of sort of. Getting real fuzzy there. Yeah, you're Uh-oh. you're a robot. Uh oh. All right, hold on. <laughs> He's checking out that FaceTime stuff I was telling him about. <laughs> All right, am I back? Wow, you're you back. are back. How did you fix that? Oh, okay, magic. I was gonna hang up and call you back. Seriously, how'd you it, fix that? It's so easy to fix things on Macs, you know. Well, if you had a PC, you wouldn't friendly. have to fix it to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> See, it can go both ways. I can play that game. <laughs> See, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to jump in and say that you're both wrong. <laughs> well, uh, I guess you're more I, I on Glenn's side. Go, I think Apple's going to go back to the old body. The old I mean, body, that's what really? What all the accessories Why? are made for. That's what people are used to. I think they're going to end up going back to the old I body and so. put a touchscreen in that. Nope, I don't think so. I think you're mistaken. And, and I mean, if you look at their track record, record, they had two of the long skinny body, then they changed it. Then they had two of the long skinny body, now they changed it. So then they're going to have two more generations of the long skinny body, and then they'll change it again. Well, here's the deal. You are right on one thing, and I am wrong on one thing. I said that it would be the same form factor when they come up with the next version with the video. It won't be, because they do widescreen, and they can't do widescreen on these. You know, these are square. Yeah, it's uh, three centimeter by three centimeter. So the next version that comes out will be three centimeter by five centimeter, and uh, <laughs> and that will be touch screen and you know everything. But that'll look roughly the same size as I, you know, a little bit smaller I think than the old version of the iPod Nano. But mm-hmm. it'll, you'll just use it in and landscape I, mode, I believe. I, I like touch screen things, but I don't know if I'm going to buy a Nano that doesn't have the click wheel. The click w- the click wheel is what makes an iPod. There's something to be said for that. I agree. But yeah. I don't know if I need that wasted space. If they can make it smaller and you know put smaller buttons, I don't know if I need that big thing. See, my, I, use, I use my Nano at the gym. When I'm running, whenever I'm on the bike, whatever, I like being able to just reach over on my armband and hit a button to go to the next track, hit a button to pause it. you know, Without having to look at it. R- roll my finger over it to turn the volume up and down. I understand this does have a... Uh, hard buttons for volume up, volume down. I would expect that, yeah. Um, but it doesn't have hard buttons for changing tracks. Well, and what is kind of cool with it, though, is it has that built-in little clip for gym use. 
which I, I imagine the uh, the accessory manufacturers pretty much hate. Yeah, right? I bet you're right. I was thinking the accessory uh, manufacturers might be happy, actually, with the new form factor, so people have to buy new accessories. But uh, you're right, if it has a built-in I think you're going to have less people buying accessories. Yeah. The only real accessory I have for my iPod is an armband. Right. This one, you don't need it. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. I, I don't see it as a nano. I see it as a shuffle with a touchscreen. Uh, that's a good description, I guess. So is the iPod Touch the new nano? It's kind of big to be called a nano. I agree. All right, so how do we feel about the new iPod Touch? We mentioned already it's got the FaceTime in it. It's got Aside the new that, screen that's supposed to be high res like the iPad. Right. It's got what else? What else is different about it? That's pretty much it, isn't it? That, that yeah, that's basically it. Okay. I, so I'm, we don't I'm care not about overly that. impressed with it. I mean, it has the front-facing camera. Right. And well, I mean, what else do you expect from it? What do you What do you want? You want it to make you lunch? Oh, that'd be great, Please. actually. I, I am getting a little hungry. <laughs> yeah, no, my, and my coffee is almost empty. If it could make that too, <laughs> that that would be swell. I'm sure there's an app for that. <laughs> well, there's the beer drinking one, and uh, you I know what? If we had a Wi-Fi Hershey's. controlled like Keurig or Tassimo device, that would be really hot. That would be. <laughs> Just sit at your computer and hit a button and it starts making you coffee? Yeah, I mean, we've already got the one shots, right? So just, yeah. That would be sweet, yeah. Crazy kids. I'm going to contact Keurig right now. <laughs> <laughs> if they need beta testers, let me know. <laughs> All uh, right. I, honestly, I think they've put pretty much everything into the touch that they can. Everything at that least has that's been reasonable for that price point. Everything that can be invented has been invented. And I'm sure that, you know, a year from now when they have the hologram, release, uh, the hologram iPod one. line, they'll have all sorts of new stuff to put in there. But I honestly can't think of anything else to put into a touch. Yeah. All right, moving on. Um, what else do we want to talk about today? How about mixed reality? That sounds like an interesting... <clears throat> topic. <laughs> Not Dan's mixed reality, the the one from the video, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't want to talk the about the electric acid or electric Kool Aid acid test. Yeah, no, right. not that one. Okay. Um. So, over the summer, uh, smart technologies that makes the smart board and the remotes that I use in my class and all that stuff. Um. They sent me up to Calgary to their headquarters to participate in an educational technology summit and aside from feeding me lots of really good food and taking me sightseeing uh, they gave me a bunch of free stuff <laughs> which includes what's called a smart document camera um, I think the easiest way to describe it is uh, the modern day overhead projector mm -hmm, right it's, it's basically a webcam that faces down so you can put anything under there, not just like transparencies. You can put a textbook under there, and the text will, the textbook will show up on the screen. You can draw on the textbook. You can highlight the textbook. Um, science teachers are using them a lot. You know, they'll do the experiment up front underneath the document camera, and the rest of the class can follow along at their table. One of the things that Smart is working on, and I believe they said that it's going to be released in February is what's called mixed reality and they've been demoing this at conferences uh, over the past year or so and we got to play with it a little bit uh, at this summit and basically what it is and I posted the link there in the uh, in the chat um, it's they'll send you a 3D marker whether it's um, a cube like the video shows there or they also have um, just like a card that has some symbol on it. Just looking at it, the symbol means nothing to us. But in smart software, you associate that symbol with some piece of 3D content, whether it's a 3D skeleton or a 3D fish or whatever. And then when you put this marker underneath the camera, instead of seeing just this cube with weird symbols on it, 
on the screen you actually see the 3D object that you associated with it. So then when you turn the cube, you're actually turning the skeleton or you're turning the fish. Um, that, that's pretty much the basis of it. It's pretty cute. I'm trying to figure out the real classroom functionality of it. I mean, it's cool. And I think, Dan, I think you and I saw something similar to that when we were at um, CES last year. You remember yeah. that? Uh, was it NVIDIA or ATI or someone had some sort of gimmick where you had a card with a weird symbol on it and you held it up to the screen and it did a 3D image on top of it to tell you whether or not you won something? Yeah, it was uh, ATI. Was it ATI? AMD. It was AMD and ATI, yeah. And I, I actually do see this. I, I don't see it necessarily... In a uh, in a high school setting, I guess for anatomy it'd be great. But uh, you know, I've had a big complaint with doctors lately. Doctors just uh, they Google things. They Google your symptoms right now, and <laughs> and, and, and and I can do that and, and become a hypochondriac. I, I don't need to. I don't need to pay somebody loads of money to do that for me. But as far as learning anatomy and seeing um, just the anatomy diseases, how they actually physically attack and manifest. I think that that could give doctors a recharge, if you will, and take them away from uh, Google and and bringing them back to practicing medicine, actually touching their patients and and figuring out what's wrong. I could definitely see it there. Hmm. Uh, I could see it even um, in classroom settings for mechanics as well, mm -hmm. or even engineers, uh, architects. You know, sure. a, phys a physical manifestation of what what's your what's your building so uh, you can in incorporate this into uh, software applications like AutoCAD to get your 3D rendering of what the building or structure that you have just drawn really looks like mm -hmm. hmm. e even in I mean those are all great applications for the technology but even more basic I mean I'm a social studies teacher I teach ancient history if I go into Google SketchUp, the Google 3D warehouse, there's tons of 3D content already created of models of the Parthenon or models of, you know, an Egyptian sarcophagus or something. And it's so much easier to talk about it when you can see it from all angles instead of, okay, here's a picture of the front. Okay, here's a picture of the side. Because a lot of students don't have that spatial awareness. They can't put those things together to completely understand it. And with something like this, you just, and you'll be able to download, you'll be able to associate it with any 3D content. So it's not just smart related stuff. It's not just whatever they sell you. You can go into 3D Google, or Google's 3D yeah. warehouse and download whatever you want. I can download a 3D model of the entire Acropolis of uh, Athens and using this marker, take them on like a little virtual tour around it. That's that is it's really phenomenal. I mean, it's been proven that that individuals learn in different manners. They learn by seeing, they learn by doing, they learn by hearing. So pulling this all together into um, this this mixed reality, it's it's really the best way to teach everybody because you, right. you're hitting you're hitting every way that a student can can possibly learn. You're showing right. them physically. You're giving them oral presentations on. And you're allowing them in when it when it makes sense to actually do. Mm -hmm. So if they could, uh, in, Glenn, in your history class uh, or social studies, if if you get um, a 3D rendering of a, an archaeological dig where they can go through in an interactive manner and do the dig, you know, brush the stuff off, um, right. hmm. and look at it. it. It's it's a phenomenal way for them to learn. And. On the document camera, there's there's a button. So like while I'm rotating around whatever it is, whether it's the Acropolis or a dig site or whatever, you can hit a button on the camera and it freezes it and it makes it a new slide in your presentation. So then you can label different things. Then hmm. you pick the marker back up and it picks up right where you left off. And then you can rotate it to somewhere else and freeze it and label things and point things out. So you'll be able to use it, I mean... Like you said, for anatomy, you know, I could be rotating the skeleton around, freeze it, label a couple bones. Kids can make sure that they know which bone is which, or you could even use it, you know, for quizzing, like, okay, which bone is this one here? 
and then rotate it around, see if they can find it on the other side from a different angle, things like that. See, I agree with you guys with the importance of the 3D, and I, I like these different uses of the 3D. But when we get down to it, this is really just an input device. It's just a way to rotate in a 3D environment. And I don't know why the mouse can't do that. I'm, I'm very happy moving around in Google Maps and, and, you know, 3D environments using a mouse. And I think that it's going to be difficult for me to, to navigate a 3D world by moving a block around. I think it's, I'm more trained and used to using a pointing device. Mm -hmm. It would be one thing if there was some magical hologram on the block and I actually was doing it in reality. But when I'm not, sure. you know what I mean? It's just a, it's just an input device. It's kind of cool, but I don't know. I'm not seeing the huge advantage of it. I think, I think the biggest advantage will be when you're having students do it, not when you're having the teacher do it. Because it gives them the hands-on learning. You can't yeah. actually give them a hands-on of the Parthenon unless you take them to, over to Greece. But this way, they can manipulate the Parthenon. They can actually explore it themselves. And it's some a students are experience. much more hands-on. And a mouse, yes, you are using your hand to navigate, but it's not as hands-on as actually manipulating a block, and that is displaying what you, what you want to see. Yeah, it's definitely not as hands-on. I agree with you. And if nothing else, I guess there is some value in having it different, something else that will catch the student's interest. And yeah, make I'm not them saying use attention. it for everything. I'm not going to make a 3D <laughs> model of everything that I cover. I mean... That would just waste time. A 3D model of the Constitution would be worthless. Right, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's the back of the Constitution. Here, look how thin it is on the side. Yeah. And here's the secret <laughs> message on it's the it's back not, from that movie. Right. <laughs> Even a 3D model of George Washington. Like, uh, yeah. this is the back of his head. <laughs> but I, I believe there are applications for it. And yeah. they have it priced... I mean, it's brand new, so obviously the price is high. But the camera itself is, I believe, seven ninety nine, mm. which, when you consider, it does the three D, but it also can work as the projector. You yeah, know, you that's also, true. I'll give you that. That's you can also put books under there. You can do science experiments under it. You can do other things other than just the three D. So I, I believe, in terms of cost effectiveness, I think it is a tool that districts could easily adopt. So, so you can take this camera and take 3D pictures or take pictures from every angle and create these 3D models yourself? Hmm. I don't know if you can splice it together or not. Because that would be, I mean, really great because it, it, is, it is common um, amongst teachers to go on um, vacations in the summer, you know, you get your summer break, but you go on for, if you're a history or social studies teacher, you go, say, to the Grand Canyon, and you take your own pictures of the Grand Canyon, and you bring right. those back, and you create a completely personalized, not in a textbook, learning experience for the students, which is, in my opinion, much more valuable and interesting Absolutely. as a student than something that is just uh, a teacher regurgitating or right. paraphrasing a, a textbook. Mm -hmm. Right, that's true, and I'm sure that even if this software doesn't allow you to make your own 3D, you know, images, I'm sure you can get some third-party program to do that. Yeah. He said that uh, Glenn said that they don't require you to use only smart right. 3D, you know, right? That they're they're you, using you have some to use regular... the smart software for the presentation itself, but you can embed 3D content from anywhere. Right, they're they're being pretty open about yeah. the platform, which is nice. Um, I mean, I guess I I honestly haven't used Google SketchUp that much, but I suppose you could make mm -hmm whatever you wanted in SketchUp. And SketchUp then. isn't difficult at all. I've used it many a times whenever we were, you know, remodeling the building in mm -hmm. Waynesboro, the office there. Many a times I, you know, drew that and redrew it. And it is, I mean, for the basics, there's, I mean, obviously you can get very professional with it, but for basics and, you know, and, and even with what I did, you can, you know, take your camera angle and go down and look at it from different angles and walk through it. And I mean, you can get as well, detailed as our, you want. Our one, our one tech ed teacher did a 3D model of our school he had students actually in class making a 3D model in SketchUp of our school. And I was thinking while I was sitting, you know, at the summit, seeing them use this uh, mixed reality, I was thinking, wow, that'd be really cool. Like for orientation or something, you know, you could actually use the little cubes and stuff to 
have students find their way through their schedule or whatever. Like, hmm. you know, not, not during class time, but we have those back to school nights, like leading up to school. So students can figure out where they're supposed to go and stuff. And it'd just be another way for them to see it. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. And, and it's, I think it's a neat thing to have the students making it. I mean, that sure beats any tech ed or anything that I've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty valuable, especially if it's someone who's going to go but into I, I that think, kind I of think a, in tech ed, what, in middle school in tech ed, didn't we build uh, houses out of popsicle sticks yes, or something? Yes, yeah, right, yeah. which I'm not saying isn't valuable, but I think that in real life, you don't generally build them out of popsicle sticks anymore. Not usually, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it just... <laughs> I, well, I, I think it's, 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 a, it's a rich, rich media learning environment, and this definitely uh, enhances that. Students, um, especially younger students, they're easily distracted, myself included. I'm easily distracted. So if you can keep the uh, learning experience interactive and fluid, the, then you'll, you'll keep the students engaged. You'll see sure. more knowledgeable students coming out of your classrooms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. And and you have to consider the type of students we're trying to teach now. I mean, these are students that are surrounded by digital everything. I mean, these kids are going to be having 3D TVs maybe eventually. <laughs> um, maybe not too far, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I mean, they they're just they have technology for everything. And putting a textbook in front of them with a picture of I keep using the Parthenon because that's what I would be using it for, but whatever, yeah. it, it's not going to motivate them. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing that teachers have to do. It's not getting them to learn and understand. You need to motivate them because once they're motivated, they want to learn it. Yeah. So if, if you can motivate them using this 3D content, even if you're motivating 10 of them using it, and then the other 15, you're using something else, a podcast, because they learn more by audio or whatever it is. It's, it's a tool so you can motivate more of your class. Yep. Like, like I said, students learn in different manners. They, they learn by seeing, hearing, doing. So, uh, Multiple like you said, Glenn, exactly. You just pull it, you pull, it, uh, you pull it all together in as many different ways and to hit as many of those students as you possibly can. And I, I think this is a great way because it already, it will it will easily work with the technology that a lot of classrooms already have. It already it, it'll work cooperatively with the smart board or um, even the the response remotes that I have in my class. They're made by smart. During like while I'm rotating things around, I can freeze it, label a couple things A B C D hit a button and it lights up on their remotes and I can ask them a question, okay, which one of those bones is the femur? And then they answer on the remote and then I pick the cube back up and I rotate around and so you can easily, you know, combine all these different technologies that are already in the classroom with this 3D thing. It's not like a standalone piece. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. I think it speaks to uh, how we're going to more and more of an ADD culture. You know, we, yes. we can't keep <laughs> back in my day. We had books and we were happy with them. And then they added color. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, you need more and more and more to keep the kids' attention. And they have yeah. the attention span of a shorter and shorter period of time. It's just right. Which kind of goes into uh, what do you guys think about this new Google instant search thing in case like people it. haven't noticed I, I on really like Google it. if you start I mean it's always been that they had the Google suggestion on the home page of Google if you start typing it starts suggesting what you might mean but now it actually begins searching and each letter you type in if you pause for a second it does a search and shows you the results of what you've typed in thus far Sure. Instantly, you don't have to click on it. You have to don't have to wait for the next page to load. It's just immediate. And uh, I guess some people are a little concerned. The only controversy per se um, for it is that I guess it uses a little bit more bandwidth because it's sending all that extra data in as you type. And I, you know, that's true. But it's really only when you delay for a second that it 
you know, actually does the search. You have to pause just for a second and it'll do the search. Right. And it's not that much bandwidth per user. I mean, it's only sending the list of results, not the whole page. It's Ajax. Right. But, you know, if you multiply that up across, you know, all of the dozens of Google users, that does add up. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sooner or later, uh, the, the broadband providers out there are just going to have to, um, I don't know, come to grips with, we, we are a, uh, a nation that wants videos, pictures, uh, music, and we want it instantly, and we're going to do it all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> including video so, chat, including over cellular, darn it. it, it exactly. So, <laughs> so complaining about it, there's a market there for them to... Um, for them to explore and if they come to grips with it now as opposed to later they can profit off of it you know google had played around with doing some broadband and they've already done for their own backbone but you could easily come up with some broadband uh provider that in addition to offering cheap broadband they, they find some way to insert ads and get additional revenue from that but complaining about google's Google giving you an instant search, which is which is primarily text, <laughs> right now is ridiculous. Least. What happens well, when you start sure. doing instant video search? Well, I I, I was <laughs> just playing around with that, quite honestly. So it's it's very interesting that the instant search will not pull up any kind of um, pornography. So if you put in like something that would, would pull up some <laughs> some uh, pornography, like um, for example, Raven Even Riley is search off. huh. Um, let me let me see if I have safe safe search off settings, uh, search settings. Um, use moderate filtering here. Let's not filter my results at all. Save the preferences. Mine have been saved. Fantastic. Now. And still, like for example, Raven Riley is a an adult film star, and uh, I I type in up to the R I L of her last name, and I still get nothing. So it's just interesting that there's already some filtering going on there. So Google could easily filter out um, live media, if you will. Or, the question, um, of course, is would they want to? Rich media, I don't know. Let's uh, let's go back to I'm in um, I Google. Just to Google.com, classic home. One thing I really like, I think it's a really smart way of them to differentiate. You know, they've got a couple of search engines trying to compete now with Bing and, you know, trying, I said, trying. Right. But it's a <laughs> nice way to differentiate. You know, I mean, it's yeah. everyone else is adding different filtering techniques and all these side panel things, and it's such a simple thing, yep. and yeah. I really like it. I do, too. I, I, I love just, it. I just, it, used it. I just use it in... Uh, in I mean, I'm going to relate everything to education, so deal with it. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I just used it. I took my class to the computer lab, and at the beginning of every year, I, I teach them proper searching techniques hmm. because they, they don't know how to find information, and they don't know how to find reliable information. Yeah. And, I mean, this came out at a perfect time because it made it so easy for me to go over with them, look at the difference between the search results you get when you use these type of keywords mm -hmm. instead of typing out a whole sentence or if you're looking for this specific page what are you going to type and they can actually see how far down on their list these things show up based on the keywords that they're entering and it's instant it it makes it so much easier for them to see the difference between adding a certain word or taking a certain word away and i, I mean for that I love it. It's that great. makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yep. Yep. That makes it, a it's, lot of sense. It's, it's primarily text, so there's nothing to be alarmed about right now uh, for the broadband providers. <laughs> um, I like it. It helps me when I am uh, mildly retarded and can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's nice. Yeah, I like it. I, I do. I, I mean, I think the controversy is just people really trying to pull at straws, and I think part of it is the whole Google is so big now that everything they do must be bad. They and must be evil. Well, there's it, a lot of that. Microsoft, you know, 
Microsoft is a Me Too organization, so I'm sure that we'll be seeing something on Bing soon. I, I would not be surprised. And the other ones, not just to target yeah. Bing, but sure. you know, the Yahoo's and the you know, whoever else is out there the, that are trying to make it in the search engine area. I thought Yahoo was using Bing. Am, am I dreaming that? Could be. I don't know. Okay. Did a um, uh, slightly different topic. I'm trying to find the article, but did you hear about, I believe it was one of the Galaxy phones, um, but it, it runs Android, but Verizon uh, changed everything. It, it's still running Android, but Verizon makes you use Bing as the search engine. That's the... Ooh. Uh, like, why? wait. So you, you have people buying an Android phone, a Google phone, and you're forcing them to use Bing. Hmm. I'm trying to find it here. Can't find and it Microsoft all. and Yahoo do have a Bing deal. This came out uh, in July, yeah, where uh, Yahoo's using nice. the Bing search engine. So, and isn't Yahoo also using uh, Google's uh, ads? Mm -hmm. Ad sense. So, d <laughs> does I Yahoo heard. do anything? <laughs> do, do, do they do anything other than use other people's stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, does Microsoft do that? All right, all right. I, I won't get into Microsoft. Oh man, you're getting just getting mean now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on, Microsoft has turned into a me too. Although I, I do have to say that I, I I love my Windows Seven laptop. That's right. I forgot your your Windows file now instead of just a Linux file. I I also have, yeah I'm a Windows file as well. So let's throw that out. Where uh, can people find out more about you, Danny? They can uh, look me up at linuxfile.org or windowsfile.org. Right on. And on Twitter, do you tweet anymore? I occasionally. Is it just me, or is you, Twitter starting to fade out now? I have barely I, used it in the last couple of you know months almost. I'll say a it's fading out ago. for me simply because I'm I'm busy. I'm just too busy, and I don't think about tweeting to the rest of the world uh, what I'm doing. I'm running from uh, kid <laughs> kid thing to kid thing to kid thing. Running to from the to, kids, right? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> that is not true. Now, out of curiosity, what about Facebook? Do you use Facebook? I do use Facebook so, a lot because it's a lot easier for me to post pictures of my kids uh, on Facebook and share them with everyone instead of sending each one individually, hey, here's a new picture, here's a new picture, here's a I new mean, picture. But I mean as opposed to Twitter, I'm just curious because I find myself, I still don't use Facebook very often. Maybe every couple of days I log in there. But <laughs> more often than I do Twitter, especially recently. I used to check Twitter all the time, but recently I feel the same way as you do. It's just I don't have enough time. So I do think you, in less than nine months you will, you will, you will change about... <laughs> about four what, months. <laughs> okay, four months. You will, you will change. Uh, I'll uh, be on Facebook more often. I, I, I seriously, either you or Heather, you're going to be on there more often posting pictures because you want to keep everyone in the loop about what's going on. Right. You know? And for and those you have, listening or watching who don't know, uh, my wife and I are expecting our first child here in January. Did I let that out of the bag? No, no, no. I, it's, it's already been announced on TSG. We already have, okay. I have scans of the ultrasounds out there. So, uh, on it's Facebook. Ve it's very, including on are Facebook. Are you serious? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Why the hell did I? Yeah, I didn't see these. I've got, I've got, I must see them. Well, you, you probably aren't used to seeing Mike's name in your uh, news feed on there. <laughs> he doesn't really do much on Facebook, so. <laughs> I see I how you, it I, is. I was super excited when I saw, I cried. I swear to God, I cried when I saw the first picture of, of, of my child. The ultrasound, you mean? Yes, I cried. Oh, what a wuss. I cried. <laughs> 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 Way to be insensitive I, there. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you wouldn't necessarily expect it, but yeah, I I, I cried. I, I I use I use Facebook daily. Um, Twitter. See, my problem with Twitter is that I have three Twitter accounts that I have to update. Um, not have to update, but I choose to update. Uh -huh. My right. my personal one, I don't update nearly as much as I used to. I, I check it a lot. I read the tweets. There's some great people that I follow that share some amazing information, but I just I don't have enough time for all of it. Well, while we have you there, what is how can people find you and where they, should they look you up? Oh, the my personal Twitter is just Glenn Cermak. Um 
I do have a classroom one, which people probably would not be interested in following unless they want to know when picture day is and things like that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but uh, that's Mr. Cermak. And then I also uh, have, it's S-R-P-A-S-C-D, which is um, Southern Region of Pennsylvania Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development. Wow. And Yeah. That sounds like that's that's S-R-P-A-S-C-D. Um, and basically what that is, is it's a stream of, I, I post articles dealing with education in Southern Pennsylvania so that other administrators, teachers, whatever can follow it and see, you know, news from around the area. Right on. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, appreciate you guys both being with me today and uh, all of your input and everything. We didn't decide on when the next show's going to be. I usually try to do that in advance so I can announce it, but forgot all about it. So to find out when the next show is going to be, you are going to have to go out to techguy.tv. That's the easiest way to get to our podcast and stream and all that stuff. If you go to techguy.tv up at the top, it'll tell you when our next live recording will be so you can join the chat room like the fellows who've been in there. We've got a couple of guests and a couple of people who've been logged in over the time. Appreciate you guys being there. Uh, so you can do that. And uh, also all the past episodes are on there, so you can always look them up and uh, watch it that way. We'll put the show notes up as well, which include links to the uh, articles and YouTubes and everything else we talked about. And again, all of that's at techguy.tv. And the discussion, we have tech-related news discussion at techguy.org in the forums. And, uh, of course, that's also where you go to get all of your technical questions answered. So be sure to check that out. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. Yep. Merry Christmas. Ha <laughs> ha